goddamn Trevor Belmont. Or Trevor fucking Belmont. Like he says on the Netflix shows. I love when he said that. <laughs> anyway, just came back from watching um, Castlevania Netflix. And I watched it with my wife. And we both were having a crazy, amazing blast with it. Because it's just... <sighs> it was amazing. It, it was really, really good. I Well, I just saw the first four episodes. And, uh, you know, when I first saw the trailer, the that really super fast trailer that barely show you enough, of course, uh, you know, that will never make justice to how great the, the whole, like, each of the episodes are and it is truly a great series like you know I, I, I used to I used to fantasize and thinking of oh my god a Castlevania movie how that could work I mean if they truly made justice to it if they do it if they truly make it right how how can be good you know but then you know, this series made me realize that it has to be an animated series. Because a movie will never have the depth and, and, you know, the space to to make so much justice. I hate these bastards, by the way. Yeah, there I didn't realize that uh, I had a frenzy on, so... Anyway, for this episode, this is part... This is part of my Trevor Belmont series in Bloodborne. Uh, this is a series that is supposed to be a remake of, of an old one that I did when I first got the game. Um, I, I pretty much I did a full playthrough of the game, like raw comment. Or, I mean, raw content style, like no editing, just, you know, recording straight from, from, um, from the chair, PlayStation 4, um, capture card. But this time I wanted to make it better because now I can edit videos and I can use other sources of recording. And uh, this is supposed to be my, um, my second. You, you could say it's a remake of my Trevor Belmont in Bloodborne. The reason why I make another one is because I wasn't really happy with the original. I thought that was very, uh, I don't know, very, uh, it didn't have the depth that I wanted to have. So anyway, I wanted to take this episode, I believe this is episode 10 of this Trevor Belmont long play, you know, the old Honta from Castlevania. So I decided that I'm gonna take this um, episode to just be talking nothing but the Netflix, um, the Castlevania Netflix animated series. Cause you know, that that's the thing that inspired me to post episode nine like a few days ago. Cause I knew, you know, we were getting there where the time where we're gonna have the release of the series, and I was super hype of it. So I was like, "What, what best, you know, what best way to express love and hype for it than to continue a series like this, or playing the actually real Castlevania?" But then I was okay because to me, when I play this game and I play this way with a role play like this of a Belmont like Trevor, I really feel like, in a way, this is a Castlevania game. It truly, it really, really, really has that almost exact vibe of it and the style of it, but of course in a three-dimensional way, almost like if it were a different take on, on Castlevania. Um, so, well, <sighs> I'm doing something that I usually don't do and uh, only for this episode, I'm going to put 
most of the volume of the in-game lower and uh, it's gonna be mostly full you know full commentated um, I usually don't like to do that too much I don't like to oversaturate my videos with my voice and I don't like to uh, damage the in-game audio quality with excessive commentary but for the sake of making a decent you know review thoughts for first impression of what I just saw well I thought that this would be a great excuse to to you know to be able to make a review of it now I am not exactly a great reviewer I know I am more of a, a passionate person that does nothing to talk uh, love for and passion for those few things that I really love and you know Castlevania is, is one of those things that always always makes me super passionate and uh, well that's a reason why my channel is pretty much a whole topic of Castlevania and and why I'm doing series like this like this type of role plays and RPG games and you know action hack and slash type of RPG games and every time I play like a dark fantasy game like this if I can bring a sort of like Belmont to it and if, if it feels okay in the game if it feels good enough I always do that I always do either Simon Belmont or Trevor or, or Gary of Belmont I am also, I'm also, I've been always a huge, you know, not just old school Castlevania fan since, you know, the original trilogy and Super Nintendo and, but I've been, I'm also a huge uh, Lord of the Shadow lover and uh, well, one thing about the show, uh, the Nefri show is that it, it, it is like really based mostly on the original timeline um, you know the old school timeline where um, Dracula's curse um, which is the, the game where originally introduced um, characters like Trevor Belmont, Saifa Benaldez and Alucard and the Netflix series at least season one is super heavily um, it, it is a take on that. It's based on that story, um, but also it has a lot of the lore from Symphony of the Night, which we see in episode one. We see uh, pretty much the background story of what happened to Lisa. Lisa, who, you know, in the uh, in the timeline of Symphony of the Night, she is um, Alucard's mother, um, maybe and one of the wives of Dracula, probably one of the several that he had. So, <clears throat> you know, unlike the lore of Lords of Shadow, um, which you know Marie Belmont is the mother of Alucard and also Alucard and Trevor Relmond they are the same person let's hear this I'm gonna be uh, trying to not to talk in certain parts where we got like NPC talking like that. And if you see me like getting quiet out of nowhere, it's cause I'm trying to highlight some moments in the in-game while I'm trying to do my commentary review. And this guy is gonna suffer a horrible faith. But yeah, talking about Lisa, um, yeah, we see what happened to her and a horrible fate that we only knew that happened to her in Alucard's Nightmare. Ah! The Alucard Nightmare that, that we 
we see in Symphony of the Night produced by some evil succubus that give, um, you know, Alucard this terrible vision of his mother being slaughtered by people. So, I don't know. I know, it, you know, for those who are a huge fan of the original timeline, um, which, which in, in essence, you can say there is the very original timeline of Konami, and then there is the timeline that kind of like Koji Garashi uh, brought to the Castlevania series. Those who don't know, Koji Garashi, he did not create the Castlevania. He just started to work for it pretty much right after Symphony of the Night. And uh, I was going to say that for those who really love, you know, the old school Vania and, and the Koji um, series too, because he did a lot of great Castlevania games. And also for those who love, you know, the Lords of Shadow saga, it's very rough when, you know, when, like, when we get at something like Castlevania Netflix that is, like, heavily just focused only in pretty much what is the old, the old school uh, canon timeline. And, you know, it's really hard for someone like me, it's really hard not to see, you know, Marie Belmont and Gabriel Belmont and Dracula as Trevor Belmont parents or also Trevor Belmont as being the same person as Alucard. It's really rough because, you know, I don't know. Even if I know, I, I adore, adore to death. Castlevania, Lords of Shadow, 1, 2, and 3, well, 1, Mirror of Faith, and 2, even if I know I, 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 I am a very hardcore lover of those, um, it's, it's, it, it kind of fucks me up, you know, but, you know, there, is, there was a moment when I took Lords of Shadow so seriously that I wanted that to be like like the origin story of Castlevania, and uh, I wanted that to become like the true original origin story that it was to me deeper than the one of Castlevania: Lament of Innocence, which it was, you know, be before before Lords of Shadow came, Castlevania: Lament of Innocence which was again created by Koji Garashi. It was the, uh, pretty much like the origin of the timeline, right? Leon Belmont was a Belmont that came way before um, Trevor Belmont or Christopher Belmont, you know? So, and I love that the game. I really do love it. I love the character, I love the story, I love the combat of the game. The game is fucking awesome and it's one of the first 3D Castlevania games that it was really, done very well and well this guy needs some death even if I, I know I am a huge lover of you know the games like um, the 3D games, like I don't think there is a 3D Castlevania game that I hate. I think only Judgment is the one that it never appealed me enough, and I thought that was always done. I don't know, like I always thought that Castlevania deserves way more than that. But I know there's also people that think that Castlevania deserves more than what it was, Lord of Shadow, and to me. It is always a very harsh topic because I am one of those persons that I, I love that game so much that whenever I see people talking hate for it just because it's not, you know, it's a different take of the series and uh, because it's 
it's his own timeline and or because he's probably too much of a devil may cry style um, of game um, I guess you can call it more like devil may cry style a ninja guiding sigma um, heavenly sword it's more it's more based on that style than rather than the met metrovania uh, the most people will always, you know, when it, when it, when they think of Castlevania, they they want that. They think that Metrovania is the only way, or side scroller. And you know what? I, why I am a huge lover of, of those styles, and I grew up with that. I grew up with the original four Castlevania games, you know, and even the one of Game Boys that I love. And I know that it's something about Castlevania that feels so good when he's on 2D and he feels so good uh, that, you know, that it's a platform in Action Avenger in, in 2D. And, you know, I think a lot of people thinking, you know, the mentality that it has to be only that way, that, you know, 3D Castlevania doesn't work. That is just nonsense. That is just pure nonsense, and you know it. A game is not bad just because it's three-dimensional or or two or two-dimensional. A game is bad when it lacks, you know, good combat and story and character development. And to me, uh, Lords of Shadow, it had all that and more. Um, now I'm I'm not gonna get this whole, you know, um, episode just talking about my love for Castlevania in general and Lords of Shadow. I really want to talk mainly about the Netflix show, but I kind of need to see this, to, 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 talk, to talk about this just because I know some people may feel the same way like me about it, and some people would like to hear what I had to say about it, you know. Now, is there a game and this is a question that I ask to you, whoever is listening to this video. Is there a game that you love so much? So much that hurts your very soul? And you love that game so much to the point that whenever you hear people talking hate about it, it hurts you so much that you want to actually hate those who hate that game, that you don't even want to talk to them, you just want them to disappear? Well. To me, in my case, that doesn't happen too often, but there is a game that makes me feel like that. And that one is Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I, I hate the haters of that game. Because for the most part, they really they don't make any sense. Like, you know, when, when that game first came out, I, I really thought that was going to be just a, a reboot and a, a departure of everything that we thought that we knew about it but you know the fact that they added the lore of Lamen of Innocence and, and the game actually has super strong connections to the main you know canon timeline um, it's, it wasn't enough reason for me to really get invested in the game also the fact that Gabriel Belmont he quickly became one of my dearest the most favorite uh, Belmont of all time, along with you know the almighty Simon Belmont and his ancestor father uh, Trevor Belmont. Those pretty much are my three main characters that I love the best, you know, from the Belmonts. And uh, of course, there are all all the characters that I care and like a lot, like Julius or Richter or or just Belmont, you know. And, you name it, man. There's so many great Belmonts out there. Um, but I grew up, you know, I grew up with the original timeline. I grew up with Castle, with Castle One, Simon Quest, Three, and Four. And yes, I am a huge lover of Simon Quest. Okay, to me, Simon Quest it is a very amazing, underrated gem. And it was the first Castlevania that brought the Metro style you know, into the series. It was that game. Do you remember how much hate that game it got just because it was different 
than, than the original. Well, you know what, that reminds me a lot of the same type of hate and misunderstanding or misappreciation that other great Castlevania games like like 64 or Lords of Shadow gets, you know. Also, you know, I, I, I love like when we talk about like um, Curse of Darkness, there's something really great that that game has and is how amazing the uh, RPG system is in it. It is very rich and very hardcore. And that's something that sadly to me, Lords of Shadow did lack a little bit, and it was probably my complaint about it. But aside that, you know, I know I really love those strong RPG elements in games like Simon Quest, or, uh, you know, Symphony of the Night, of Course of Darkness, and, and I, 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 think, I think Castlevania really needs that, and it's something that is great to have. You know, the whole exploration, the whole open world aspect of it, the fact that you can always go and come back to the same place, places. I mean, revisit the same places, what I'm trying to say. Um, that's something that, that you don't see in, in any of the lineal Castlevania, right? And that's a big difference between one, three, and two, you know, because uh, games like Castlevania 1, Castlevania 3, Castlevania 4, they're, they're very linear, you know, you go to, you got, you go, do you do a stage, then you kill the boss, and then you go, you know, you get to the next stage, but that was a, a really, really big difference between Simon Quest, Simon Quest, it was more about solving this m huge mystery, and this huge puzzle, and backtracking a lot to areas and being always be able to free to go whatever you want and walk out of that that you know for the NES era that was a great novel and very ambitious concept that a lot of people there don't give enough um, tribute to it in my personal opinion um, Castlevania Simon Quest it is one of the best you know, Castlevania ever made, and uh, I would say I would say that uh, Simon Quest is my favorite from the NES. But I also love you know Dracula's Curse so much that it is like both to me are equal love. It just each one is like a different take of each other. One is more just plain action and platforming and adventure, and Simon Quest is more of he has that, he has all that what I just say, because, you know, despite the fact that it's such a cryptic game, and such um I don't know man, mysterious game, he has a lot of that old school uh, Castlevania style, you know, he has everything that makes the classic, a classic. Oh. How did we ever get into this mess? <laughs>
peek to the herd, not in the old town. I doubt there's any more out there. God save us. Yarnum's done for. <laughs> yeah, everything that makes Castlevania great is there. It just is it's not. It's not just mainly focused on killing enemies and go to the boss and the next boss and enemies and the next boss, you know. It, it, the, the game it really had a lot of depth to it. Now, coming back to this area and coming back here because last episode, one of the last episodes, the raven hunter, she disappeared and I couldn't find her. But now, I decided to come back here and she's here at the cemetery. So let's talk to her. That wasn't necessary of you, but you have my thanks. We made it with our lives. You're not bad at all. You must have killed Gascoigne as well, then. He was falling apart, I'm sure it had to be done. But try to keep your hands clean. A hunter should hunt beasts. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. <laughs> Try to keep your hands clean. Leave the hunting of hunters to me. Here. Together we await the help of the healing church. I cannot begin to express my gratitude to you. The only thing that I can offer is my own lowly blood. If it would suffice. Thoughts on this matter. So uh, anyway, sorry for um, I'm seems to be all over the place, like making a lot of pauses, you know, talking all the time. It's still part of my, you know, long play as Trevor Realmon. So I had to respect those moments where, when I'm gonna talk to NPCs and stuff like that. Uh, I'm gonna be talking about Castlevania Netflix whenever it's quiet moments. Now, we need to talk right here with this man. Oh, good to see you safe. Now, let's think up something to discuss. Just tell me what piques your interest. Ah, there's something I want to tell you. A bit of wisdom from the eminent master Lugarius. Once, a scholar betrayed his fellows at Bergenworth and brought forbidden blood back with him to Canehurst Castle. It was there that the first of the inhuman vile bloods was born. The vile bloods are fiendish creatures who threaten the purity of the church's blood healing. The ruler of the vile bloods is still alive today. And so, to honor my master's wishes, I search for the path to Canehurst Castle. I bid you farewell. It has been a pleasure. May the good blood guide your way. Word. 
again, um, I came with the idea of making a sort of, you, you can say this is sort of a review, but it's more like my own thoughts, you know, from, from, from a true cast of any lover that I've been ever since, since pretty much 1986 or 87, since I played the, or, the original Castlevania and I grew up with that and I am, uh, you know, um, around, around, well, my mid 30 years old and to me Castlevania still and will always be my, my most beloved franchise of video game of all time because I, you know, you know, when I when I started watching Castlevania Netflix, I felt the same that I felt when I was watching Lords of Shadow for the first time. I was feeling like this was made for me. This was made for people like me. And uh, well, anyway, talking about let's talk about the writer. Uh, I know the writer of the series is called Warren Ellis. I do not know if it's supposed to be the same person that wrote the uh, the story for Dracula's Curse. I uh, don't think so. I think he's just a very hardcore fan that wanted to make uh, a novel of it. And the movie was directed by Sam Dietz. Sam Dietz. And I think the voice actor who play uh, Trevor Belmont is called Richard Armitage, or Amitage. I'm not sure how you say the name, but but well, I guess I'm gonna try to put um, maybe I can put some kind of annotation for it. So let, let let let's start talking about what I really feel for this and. So, okay, we got the beginning, and like I said before, we got this intro. It's pretty much the first episode. It's really mostly about Dracula, and it's pretty much like an introduction to, you know, to his, to the origin story of him in, in this series. And, you know, it has to do a lot with Lisa when, when fucking mortals, they came and, they burn her life, and they burn her at the stake, accused of being a witch, just because she was a woman of science, a woman of you know different beliefs. Um, you know, back then in the time, sadly, a lot of people like that were victims of religious pranks that love to hurt and kill just people that that they wanted to believe in something different. Um, now, one thing I really love about the Netflix, Castle in the Netflix, is that it shows a very, very horrible, evil side of religion, which is very real and very hardcore, and I just love that the series has the ball to, to do that. It, you know, it's not just that. Also, it, it can be extremely gory and very dark and eerie and very uh it's it, you know I, I always thought that castlevania should be like that it should be very dark you know it should be dark fantasy and uh they're they're doing that really right you know they they show um religion not not like this holy thing that some of the castlevania games they make you believe that just because you are a belmont you are this holy guy that just love his cross but the series is not like that at all it, it is really like it shows a horrible horrible side of it and i like the fact that trevor Belmont is against it die monster i love the fact that they don't make you know, in the series, the Belmont like this, totally, you know, holy brainwash guys. Uh, they think that there's nothing bad in religion when it is, you know. 
and it's when people make it bad and horrible people like the priest and the bishops that we see in Castlevania, Netflix, the, the people that that kill Lisa and they uh, they pretty much created the rage of Dracula. Um, so, you know, the first episode I thought just just the first episode I thought was amazing, man. When they showed it, you know, how they brutally murdered her, and then we we see pretty much a remake of what it was, Lisa in Symphony of the Night, you know, pretty much begging to Alucard for not to fall into rage and hate for what they're doing to her, which is very unbelievable because if I were Alucard, I will slaughter everyone in that shit, man. So I can totally understand the pain and the grief, again, of Dracula. You know, Dracula in this version, he is very, very similar to the Gabriel Velmont version of Dracula. He even looks like him, which I like. He has that Dracula Lord of Shadow 2 look on the face. Um, and you can tell that, you know, the pain that he's suffering in this one is a lot like in Lord of Shadow, you know, that he's devastated for the love. For, for you know for the death of his loved one and also devastated because there is a curse that's pretty much controlling the whole world and um, I like how it shows that Dracula he's not like the source of evil that is actually people who are all also evil too you know and and in the story is very very um, I don't know man it's very honest about it so I really did love episode one and I thought it was a great introduction to Dracula. For the most part it was Dracula. Well, we also see Alucard, but we see Alucard uh, define Dracula, saying that pretty much he agree with his rage and he can understand it, but he's not going to allow him to do genocide, which I can understand. Genocide is never a great, it's never a good thing because there's always innocent people around. There's always innocent people that they don't have anything to do with what's going on. So not everybody is a fucking evil, demented, bishop, prick, you know, that he's obsessed to to turn everybody into the witch that's gonna burn at the stake. So well pretty much kinda like, uh, at the end of the episode we got Trevor Belmont <laughs> in this bar and uh there were these pricks, you know, pretty much talking about how Belmonts are so evil and they deserve to be, you know, discarded. And he's like, shit. And then right after that, um, we got, you know, the episode ends and we got the second one when pretty much they, they start to take this fight against him. This uh, fucking drunk bastards, they just want to pick a fight with Trevor and they, they really are doing their best to piss him off. Now, at first, uh, I didn't like the fact that that they were pretty much like treating him like if he wasn't even a Belmont at all. Like he was like pretty much like taking it in the face till he got really pissed off. You know, they start to to push every single button in him, and they even got physical on him. Like they even kicking in the balls, man. And that's when he really got really pissed off. You know. And he was like, will you stop, fucking stop hitting me in my testicles, you know? And then after that, he pretty much he becomes like the Trevor Belmont, the wicked Trevor Belmont that we know, you know, the one that he will fuck you up, you know, and he will he will get really pissed off. Because, you know, Trevor, he got a history of being a very um, uh, hard-tempered Belmont. He's supposed to be considered to be one of the most serious ones. But at the same time, he can be very, very rough. And we see part of that personality in, in Curse of Darkness when he, well, he was way more arrogant and the version of Trevor Belmont in Curse of Darkness. Here, we see a more, kind of a, I don't know, he's like a more humble um, version of him that, that also he knows when danger is around and he's trying to avoid 
you know, danger. So he's more like a very, he, he, in a way, he's more like a very realistic fighter. Like he knows when something can be really wrong and, and he's trying to find a way around it. That it will be like the safer way to do. But if Chess goes down, he just goes down like a Belmont, you know. And, well, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I thought that it, it, it was fun to see him recovering from him being all wasted and drunk at the, at the beginning and pretty much this stupid guys they were pretty much making a joke out of him but then he become you know like he, he really fucks them up really hard and I, I think the the vision of him it was that he didn't like want to hurt people that he wanted to really avoid that because they, they want to try to show a more heroic side of him so I can understand that even if it kind of annoys me the fact that they were pretty much you know punching him in the face so many times and getting on his face so many times like I don't know man if I were Trevor I know I would lose my shit <laughs> like way sooner than that <laughs> now I I really like the way Trevor look in this series I think his face looks looks fucking awesome he looks like a mix of I don't know, a version of the his face that we see on, on Curse of Darkness. But at the same time, it was like a kind of a reinvented version. Like, he had, you know, the shorter hair, but he still had that that face. Uh, the, that's how we remember him. You know, with the green eyes and, and the fierce expression. And, and that, you know, that unique style that only Belmonts have. And... Um, also, it was really awesome. I really one of my favorite parts it was the, the way they introduced Saifa or Saiha and now this into the series, which in Castlevania Three, she's she, this powerful, you know, uh, mage, cleric, um, warlord, vampire hunter lady that um, that she's the one that that Mary Trevor at the end and she's the one that is actually the mother of Simon Belmont and you know locally she's also introduced in Mirror Faith uh, from the you know from the Lords of Shadow Saga but even if I was happy that she was in it and even if he was happy that it was confirmed her being the mother of Simon and wife to Trevor and all that which I, I really love that Trinity aspect of it I really hate the way that she died on Lords of Shadow, but I really do love um, the way she was introduced in Netflix, and they pretty much they make the remake from where Trevor fight the Cyclops in Castlevania Four a uh, Three, and then he uh, pretty much rescues Saifa from this prison where she's captured to it. So anyway, this is the end of the episode right here. And I'm gonna try to talk just a little bit more after um, the end of the playthrough. That was my part 10 of Trevor Belmont in Bloodborne. And uh, well, I just wanna say that I'm very, very happy for, for Netflix. I think it's great. I think it feels really legit. It feels like it's created by true fans of the, uh, you know, the original timeline. And people like me, who grew up loving to death games like Castlevania 3 and, and you know, and the original Castlevania games. So, um, I don't know, I think uh, the animation is great. Um, you know, when you see it at first, it may give you the, the illusion that it, it kind of it looks too animated. But at the same time, he actually he has that great, you know, manga style that I really love to see in, in animated movies like Ninja Scroll or or Vampire Hunter D, or uh, but it feels kind of like a mix of that that you know darker tone with with more like a sort of a Inuyasha style to it. Um, I think the animation is great. Um, the characters, they, they, their facial, their expressions, the, the, the voice acting, they, they, they are phenomenal. 
and I think they did a great work on, on you know, Trevor, Sci-Fi, and also when later on we have appear Alucard, which, well, sadly, um, Trevor and Alucard they had a fight, which it didn't make too much sense, but when you think about it, in the in-game, Trevor, he fought this vampire before, before he freed Alucard. So I guess they were trying to say that that vampire was Alucard, and then he awoke to his true senses somehow but he he was in his true senses the whole time he was actually okay you know he's that holy vampire that we all love and like he was Trevor that he was kind of being an ass you know pretty much like he was being a, an ass with Hector Devil Forge Master on, on Castlevania Dracula's Curse you know it was very similar like that but anyway, um, but I hope my sort of a review, um, commentary, first impression on Castlevania um, Netflix won't disappoint you. This is just me um, continuing my series of Trevor and Bloodborne and then I decide to add my voice talking about, about what I feel for the Netflix show and my view about it. And I just want to say to the whole world that, that really it is a great work. I recommend even people that they don't know Castlevania to, to, to go and watch it. And um, it is a great show. Um, me, as a person that loves Castlevania fully, like from, from the original timeline to the mid timeline to the lower of shadow timeline, I just want to say that I honestly, you know, what I really wanted to see and what I really dream is like they finally they make this update, right, to the whole universe of Castlevania and unite all timelines as one. I would love to see that. I would love, like, I would be happier if this movie were just the way it is, the Netflix series, but at the same time based in the lore of Lords of Shadow, if they can find a way to combine both, but I I, I don't know. I guess it's really hard to if you go, if you're gonna make a true remake to Castlevania three in an animated series, I guess it's gonna be really hard to see Alucard and Trevor as being different heroes, you know, unlike Lords of Shadow, which they are the same person, which is something that to me. At first, it make it very strange, but after a while, it grew the idea of it. It grew up more and more and more deeply in me. So anyway, well, the Alucard version of Lords of Shadow will always be my favorite version, and it's because Trevor Belmont, he's one of my dearest Belmont of all time, and um, you know, that's why that that's why he's my favorite version of. Of Alucard, and I also thought that they did a great work in Lords of Shadow, the way they directed Alucard and the voice they gave him, you know, his rough, stark voice, you know, Ricard Madden voice, and all that. It's just awesome. Um, but yeah, the series is amazing. I cannot wait to see more. I wish I can talk more about it. I have seen only the first four episodes, and I'm super hyped to see what else the series gonna deliver. Um, I'm very happy that there's still true Castlevania lovers out there just like me, you know, that, that sometimes I think that I am the only person that loves Castlevania so much, that I obsess so much of it, and I think about it every day, every moment, but I, I know I'm not the only one. There's people out there, you know, like the people responsible for creating the games, for writing the scripts, for you know, writing the stories, for making animated series like this, people like that. Those are the true, you know, Castlevania fans, the real royal ones, and the loyal ones. And uh, I'm just happy that people exist like that. I'm happy that that a series like the Castlevania animated series, a reminder of you know, a remember the heroes from the past, from the NES era. You know, the heroes from the epic games that came before, the Demon Soul games, 
the games that came before, the Dark Souls, the Bloodborne games, the Castlevania games, you know, games like that, like Ninja Gaiden or Golden Axe or Ghosts and Goblins, you know, etc. All those dark fantasy games, uh, Dungeons and Dragons, you name it, you know, like none, none of the games of this era will be the same without those. Okay, and to me, to me, Castlevania will always be the first one, and and the one I will always, will always gonna take the highlight, and the altar. Anyway, that was the voice of a true Castlevania fan and lover, and go and fucking watch Castlevania Netflix, or disappear from the world. Okay. <laughs> No, seriously, I love Castlevania, and I, and I love Castlevania Netflix, it's, it's really awesome, it's really, really, really good, love it.